Hey everyone, welcome back to First Hand Globetrotting. I'm back with part two of my travel vlog for my trip to the Riviera Maya in Mexico. In part one, I showed you the first three days of my trip, my amazing resort, and all the sun, sand, and fun that I had to enjoy. If you haven't watched that video yet, the link is down below in the video description. But I've got so much more to show you. It's day four of my trip, and the resort life has been good, but I'm ready to get out and explore Mexico. We got out on the road really early, and before long we could see the tiny towns and villages zoom by as the sun was rising. It was a few hours drive, but I knew it was going to be completely worth it. Our main stop on this road trip was one of the new seven wonders of the world, Chichen Itza. This place is a massive tourist draw, so we made sure to get there right when it opened. But, as you can see, a lot of other people had the same idea as us. As soon as you walk through the front gate, it feels like you're on a path leading you into the jungle. Pretty soon it opens up and you see the main attraction, El Castillo, the Temple of Kukulkan. It's a huge Mayan pyramid in the middle of a clearing with jungle surrounding it on every side. How cool is that? I had seen pictures of it a thousand times on every travel website and tourist brochure, but seeing it for myself up close was just so much different. Pictures and videos just can't give you the feeling of standing at the base of a Mayan pyramid as it towers over top of you. Just an incredible thing to see in real life. The sides of the staircases are feathered snakes with their tails leading you up to the peak. It's no wonder that nearly every tourist to the Yucatan Peninsula comes here. Make sure to walk around and check out every side. Some are really well preserved, but others show how old and worn it is. Once we left the main pyramid, a lot of the vendors were starting to set up their tables for the day. It's definitely a good sign when you're there before they are. But there are actually a bunch of other smaller things to see. The next biggest thing was the great ball court. It kind of reminded me of a supersized hockey arena with big walls and smaller temples along the sides. The area was pretty well preserved, so you can get a good idea of what it would have been like for the players down on the field. And you can even see some of the old stone carvings on the walls. As you walk around, there are other little structures with their own themes, like the platform of the eagles and jaguars. The skull platform was a little bit more on the creepy side, with a bunch of heads looking back at you. In the older section, there was even a little mini version of the main pyramid. Even though the Temple of Kukulkan is the main draw, it was still really fun to see all of the other things around there. But after a while, Chichen Itza was really filling up with vendors and tour groups. Way less peaceful than when we first got there. And remember that nice, peaceful walking path on the way in? Look at it now. So much busier, hard to believe it's even the same place. It definitely paid to get there as early as we did. After spending the entire morning exploring Mayan ruins in the Mexican sun, I was pretty hot. So what better time to visit another thing the Yucatan Peninsula is famous for, cenotes. They're natural sinkholes filled with water, and there are literally thousands of them all over the place. This was my first time visiting one, and it was absolutely incredible. Just look at it, it's like a beautiful natural pool buried down underground. You need to walk down some stairs to get there, but it's completely worth it. It's like you're swimming in a cave, with tree roots dipping down into the water and sunshine coming in from the opening up top. Oh yeah, and this one has a rope that you can swing out on and splash down into the crystal clear water below. Even if you want a more peaceful, relaxing experience, it's perfect for just swimming and floating around in. You have the cave walls around you and then amazing clear blue water that seems to go down forever underneath you. Then you look up and you just see the opening back up to the surface with sun shining in at you. What's not to love about this? What an amazing place. The nearest city to Chichen Itza is Valladolid, so we stopped there for lunch. Unfortunately, I wasn't there long, but it seemed like a really cool city. It had that classic colonial Spanish look to it, kind of like you envision when you think of a Mexican city. And a big, beautiful central square right in the middle with plenty of places to sit and watch what's going on. It was so nice to get to spend some time off the resort and walk around an actual Mexican city. Don't get me wrong, I love the resort, but it was so nice to get away from the hotel to get a more authentic view of the country. We grabbed lunch at a really cool open air restaurant with a pool right in the middle. And of course, a nice big plate of some delicious traditional Yucatan food. We had so much fun at the first cenote, we had to check out another one after we ate. 
And that's the great thing around here. You really can't drive more than a few miles without running into another cenote or two. This one was kind of like the first, where you feel like you're climbing stairs into the center of the earth. But the look and atmosphere were completely different. The first one was much more about playing in the water, but this one was all about peace and calm and tranquility. It really felt like I was in a cave down there. In the center, there's a little platform you can walk out onto with still water all around. And up above is just a tiny little hole to the outside world, letting in a beam of sunlight. If you're looking for an amazing photo stop, this cenote has you covered. After that, it was back on the road and back to the hotel. It ended up being nearly a 12 hour trip, so when we got back to the resort, there was just enough time to enjoy a quick drink by the pool before getting ready to eat again. It was Italian night at the buffet, and I ate way more than I should have. Can you blame me? How can I say no to all these desserts? After an early morning start and doing so much fun stuff today, it ended up being a pretty early night for me. But I woke up on day five ready for some more fun. If you're a pepper connoisseur, they had a big display up at breakfast. Unfortunately, after breakfast, there was a red flag out at the beach, so it was too windy and wavy for much swimming. So I decided to spend some time exploring the rest of the resort. I've been here for days and barely set foot outside my own hotel. The first thing I found while exploring was that they have an on-site chapel. It's open air, surrounded by water and fountains. Looked really nice and definitely doesn't look like an ordinary church. The next thing I found was the dolphin habitat. It's right in the middle of the resort and they put on free shows every day, but honestly, the dolphins all looked a little bit depressed. They had a lot of salespeople out trying to sell swimming with the dolphins experiences, but that wasn't really for me. Walking by one of the pool bars, I noticed that they have self-serve beer taps. And here I was making the bartenders do all the hard work these past few days. The place I stopped for lunch ended up having a big pirate ship right in the middle of it. So far I've eaten at beach grills with a mariachi theme, a palm trees theme, and now a pirate theme. Definitely very fitting for along the Caribbean in Mexico. Oh, and look, even the lunch buffet has self-serve beer. How did I not notice this every other day? As I walked along the beach, I found the area with all the water sports gear. Couldn't take anything out because of the wind, but I'll definitely be back another day. But since I wasn't in the ocean, it just meant a lot more time swimming and relaxing by the pool. I've been keeping myself entertained, but they actually had a pretty big schedule of events going on every day by the pools. And scattered around, there were some other things to do like a giant chessboard, table tennis, and basketball courts. You probably get how big this place is since it took me five days to realize this stuff existed. I spent a little more time walking through the hotel next to mine, the Tropical, and found it was full of angels too. Honestly, I think I could have stayed at any of these hotels in the resort and I would have had an equally amazing time. Beautiful lobbies, incredible pools, and you're never very far from a bar or restaurant. Oh yeah, and did I mention that I found a full-size soccer field on the resort? I'd expect resorts to have things like tennis and basketball courts, but a soccer field is a first for me. And right outside the field, I made myself another lizard friend. After a day swimming and exploring, I was getting pretty hungry. And tonight's dinner was one I was looking forward to, seafood, so I was pretty excited. I started off with some ceviche, which was amazing. But the main dish was the real star of the show, grilled lobster. It was incredible, no complaints at all from me. There are stores and gift shops all over, but the resort has its own little shopping area, the Mayan Mall. I had walked through it during the day and it was a ghost town. But at night it actually seemed a little more lively and there were people there. The lights were all lit up and the carousel was working, so it seemed a lot more fun at night. First thing I noticed when I got there was that they have a haunted house. Definitely not something I was expecting to see at a resort, but could be fun. They also have a casino, but it seemed way tinier than I was expecting. A few slot machines and tables, but not much else. Another thing I wasn't expecting to see was a fake ice skating rink. I thought most people came down here to escape the cold and ice. One of the reasons the mall seemed more energetic and exciting was that they had a live DJ playing. No one really stuck around to listen, but it added some nice background music as you wandered around. We found ourselves a table at the little bar next to the DJ stage and enjoyed some drinks. Just like the bar from the other night, there was a little island in the middle of a pool where you could sit and enjoy the fresh air. 
Tonight's live show was a three tenor style musical performance. Not really my go-to type of songs, and the sound people had the speakers a little loud for this type of music, but hey, they still put on a pretty good live show. And like I said before, way more fun than just sitting around in your room. So that's it for this video, another couple of amazing days here in Mexico. This trip just keeps exceeding my expectations and I'm loving every minute of it. Make sure to come back and watch part 3 of my video, check for a link in the description. I'm going to get out and explore a Mexican city, sample as much local food as I can, see the beautiful ocean water from a boat, go swimming in a jungle cenote, and explore even more of my resort. I can't wait to do all of this amazing stuff and I can't wait to show you. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. While you're at it, like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. On Twitter, I'm Firsthand Globe. On Instagram, I'm Firsthand Globe Trotting. Follow me on there. And don't forget, it's an incredible world out there, so pick up your passport and do some first-hand globetrotting of your own.